Yeah, absolutely. And it's a pleasure to be speaking with all of you today. Um, we are have the privilege of um, doing lots of different science experiments up here using the International Space Station as the laboratory that it is. Um, one of the neatest parts about the ISS is uh, being able to use microgravity um, as, a, as an environment to really be able to kind of drill down, isolate variables, and do scientific experiments in a new way. Um, so especially when we think about uh, material science, combustion um, type of work, as well as fluid dynamics dynamics, plant growth, um, those types of cell biology, those types of experiments, really being able to utilize this uh, microgravity environment that we have uniquely on the ISS allows us to, to really um, investigate new questions in new ways. Um, Another piece of the science that we're able to do up here is really to investigate the effects of long duration space flight on the human body, uh, which will obviously be important. It is important now for us as well as in the future as we start to um, explore further and further into the solar system. So we, we become the test subjects ourselves um, and learn about how the human body responds to this unique environment. We also were able to use the ISS as a test bed to test new technologies um, in addition to our scientific experiments. And those technologies are what will lead the way to the moon and to Mars um, as, as NASA looks towards the Artemis program um, to, to institute some of those technologies. So we really are, are is a privilege to be up here to be able to participate um, in the, the kind of groundbreaking scientific work that we're doing up here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's great to be great to be talking with you all. And, and and as Jessica mentioned, you know, a lot of our research is looking at how the human body changes in this weightless and space uh, flight environment. And while we are studying um, a lot of these things to, to better prepare ourselves for the long missions that we have ahead, uh, going back to the moon and then in the future going to Mars, um, a lot of our research is directly aimed at benefiting life back on Earth. Um, for example, uh, th this particular environment, weightlessness, um, and this the spaceflight environment, including radiation and uh, the temperature, uh, the atmosphere, all has changes on the human body, which we are we are. Uh, as Jessica mentioned, test subjects for. Um, and a lot of the changes that we see in the human body mimic uh, some of the disease processes that we see on Earth. Uh, muscle atrophy, bone loss. Um, we see uh, advanced aging in the immune system. And, and there are pieces of this that scientists can use to better understand the pathophysiology and develop treatments for diseases uh, back on Earth. We have uh, a, a water reclamation system where we re recycle close to 96, 97 percent of our water to, again, um, not only sustain a long duration mission, but that ability to, to recycle water, to take um, essentially dirty water and make it potable is something that is incredibly valuable on Earth where so many of, um, so, so many of our populations don't have access to, to clean water. Unfortunately, a lot of this research takes time to develop. And an example of that, uh, this, this environment, this weightless environment provides an amazing test bed for studying protein growth um, and crystal growth. And uh, some of that study resulted in insights into uh, an incurable genetic disease on the Earth called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And the Japanese scientists have taken that information, that understanding to develop uh, um, therapeutics that can slow the uh, process of the, that disease by half, um, increasing the lifespan of, of those uh, who are afflicted with this disease, um, essentially doubling their lifespan. Um, so pharmaceutical companies have taken that information and are now currently uh, in phase three trials and hopeful that, uh, that we'll see um, that released uh, in, in around the 2027 uh, timeframe. Yes, first of all, uh, good afternoon to, uh, to Austria and uh, good afternoon to everyone uh, in Rome. A pleasure to uh, talk to you all from Space Station. Um, yes, indeed. So we are in the final uh, 
phases of the um, our new astronaut selection, and so I'm very much looking forward to meet uh, our new colleagues uh, when I when I get back on Earth or a few months uh, after that. Um, but in terms of uh, young uh, young people who uh, might aspire to become astronauts uh, one day, um, I always say that I think it's important as you as you grow up to really challenge yourself. So try and really do things that maybe you're a little bit scared of or, you know, that you think you're not quite up to yet because that's the way that you grow, that you learn your skills, new um, uh, competence, you, you acquire new, new competence and knowledge, but also you build your character and you um, understand that you, you can do hard things, you can learn new things, you can push your limits. And I think that's a little bit part of then, um, you know, going through an astronaut selection maybe one day or uh, being trained as, uh, as an astronaut. Um, I always also tell them to um, to try and learn uh, a lot of diverse things, to try their hand at many different things, and it can be, uh, you know, their main specialty, uh, maybe in a STEM subject, uh, but also in sports, but also maybe in volunteering, also maybe in, in uh, you know, expeditions, you know, travel in, in expeditionary environments, um, anything that can develop uh, teamwork skills. Uh, all of that is something that we certainly look for in, uh, in astronaut uh, candidates. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that question, sir. Um, yeah, one of the unique things about the International Space Station is the orbit that we're in. And uh, because of the uh, the inclination of our orbit, uh, we cover a very, very large portion of the Earth uh, on a daily basis. And so we get to get multiple looks at different uh, different parts of the Earth, and we see those multiple times a day. So one of the, uh, one of the best instruments that we have up here, in my opinion, is our eyeballs. Uh, so looking out the window and being able to see uh, the Earth as it changes, and that is uh, true truly a privilege, but it is also, uh, you know, an opportunity for us to notice and see the way uh, the Earth is changing, uh, whether there be, uh, you know, natural phenomena going on, natural disasters, things like that. Uh, we have the capability to get uh, near real-time uh, photography and imagery of that kind of thing just by looking out the window, uh, taking our pi uh, pictures with our own cameras or with the onboard cameras that are uh, external here uh, to the space station. Uh, in addition to that, we have lots of different uh, instruments that are looking down at the Earth, uh, measuring things like uh, sea height. Uh, and we have a new payload coming up here in the next several days called EMIT, which is going to be looking at the content of dust uh, in arid regions and, uh, and the way that dust gets transmitted by the winds to different parts of the world and the effects of that, those, that that dust can have on the climate, uh, the populations, and the vegetation in those different areas. So the, uh, the opportunities are endless up here. Uh, we've got, you know, a very unique vantage point uh, up here to observe the earth and the way uh, the way it's changing yes I, I think that um, you know when it comes to uh, human uh, uh, space exploration international cooperation is just a multiplier of opportunities uh, if if we pull our resources together then you know every participant can can focus on on what they do best and then we can integrate uh, the skills and the expertise and, and really also the you know the, the, the sheer resources that uh, everybody can pitch in and so we can um, achieve more now there's also challenges uh, associated with running a project internationally, right? You know, the coordination uh, effort becomes a, a lot more complicated, and, and that is a fact. But I do think that um, the space station has shown that it is possible, and it's uh, it's really a legacy of uh, of space station. One of the important legacies of space station to have shown how that can be done, uh, you know, and 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 over time also how those processes can be improved and how we can maximize the the benefit. Uh, without uh, being uh, hindered too much by the coordination complexity that big international projects uh, require. Um, it, it's also, I think, uh, always uh, um, a beacon of hope uh, and, and, and something to be um, hopeful about for the future when we can see that, um, you know, it, it's possible and it's valuable to cooperate across countries, across cultures uh, all over the world, and that can even be continued and sustained and maintained uh, with goodwill even in times when uh, there is conflict. Uh, and so I think that uh, that is all incredibly valuable.
Yeah, it's it's something that we we talk a lot about here. Um, you know, what what has been surprising and new to myself and to Bob, and what has um, you know felt more like home, um, come a homecoming of sorts for Chell and Samantha. Um, it is it is kind of a, a strange um, uh, consignment of things. So it is at the same time uh, very familiar. We have um, excellent mock-ups and instructors on the ground that really prepare us. Um, you know, to a, to a point where when we come up here. Um, the, the the what we're the equipment that we're working with the environment that we're working in um, in general feels very familiar. Um, however, at the same time, of course, being in microgravity is the most unfamiliar um, that, that you know that we've ever experienced. So, um, learning to kind of adapt to that environment um, while still all yet feeling somewhat uh, familiar is is kind of um, an interesting dichotomy and is something that that maybe surprised me a bit. Yeah, I think we're going to be elbowing each other uh, to get uh, get the front of line on that one. Uh, absolutely, we are, sir, we are uh, all ready to go. I know our entire office is ready to support the entire effort. Uh, that it takes to get there, and uh, and we're excited. Uh, the the fact that you know NASA is leading the way in this collaboration with all of our international partners to do this amazing thing, uh, which is the next step in exploration, which is the Artemis program. So uh, we are 100% uh, ready to go, and uh, we're really excited to see what the future holds. Uh, yes, sir. It uh, it is an amazing thing when you first experience weightlessness, as you as you well know. And I think the one one of the most amazing things is how um, how quickly our brains adapt to it. Uh, the fact that we grow up in an environment where gravity is a constant, it is uh, permeates everything, and and that we can come up to this environment, and really within hours and days, it it's not even a second thought. It is. There's no expect there. You know, I think within a day there was no expectation that I would ever walk up here in this in the space station. You just it, you float. That's what you do. Um, now you, when you first get up here, you don't float very well. Uh, but over time, you know, really within four to six weeks, I think, um, you know, watching these guys go from uh, just being exposed to it to now moving around like pros is is really cool. But you do have to plan ahead. If you're if you push off and head for something and then you miss a handrail. Uh, you end up careening into equipment or people. <laughs> um, but uh, I think a Farmer wants to do a demonstration of a backflip here for us uh, on the handrail. Oh, this is going to be terrible. Nice. Nicely done. And of course, uh, we can use our hands, we can use our feet to, we have these blue handrails that you see around station, we hook our feet under those to stay in place or to push off, or we grab on the handrails to, to turn. Um, it's a pretty neat uh, demonstration of physics, uh, you know, the, the Newton's laws of physics every day. Thank you so much. Uh, it's such a privilege to be a part of this team um, and to have this opportunity to, to talk with you all. We wish you the, be the best.